Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video we're going to be talking about one of the most common causes of bad taste in espresso when using manual espresso machines. So if you have a Sage or Breville Barista Express, Barista Pro, Barista Touch, Oracle, Oracle Touch or Barista Express Impress, this is for you. If you have any other integrated grinder machine or standalone espresso machine and grinder setup, this is also for you. Although I suspect the majority of people this will apply to is people who have integrated grinder machines. It doesn't really apply to bean to cup or super automatic machine users. Well, it kind of does, but not really to the same degree, and I'll explain why shortly. If you consider yourself to be a home barista and you spend time and effort dialing in your shots, this isn't aimed at you. Feel free to watch the video in case you find it mildly entertaining, but this will probably come across as teaching you to suck eggs, which is a very strange pastime. Has this ever happened to you? You're using a coffee bean you really like, you change the bean and it tastes horrible, and you vow never to buy that coffee again. Put your hand up if that's happened to you. Keep your hand up if you were really surprised about that because you were under the impression that this coffee bean you'd bought was really high quality. You bought it from a highly respected source or direct from a roaster. This is very common and I've even heard from people who've told me they've become disenchanted with the idea of speciality coffee. They think it's hyped up nonsense because they swapped out their usual big brand cheap bag of commodity coffee for a bag of supposedly high quality, high scoring, freshly roasted coffee and it just tasted really bad. If this happens to you, guess what? It's not the coffee beans. Some people have told me they've started a discovery subscription, for example, and sometimes the first coffee they receive, or in some cases, the first two or three coffees they receive taste great, but then all of a sudden they get an awful taste in coffee. If this has happened to you, again, it's not the coffee beans. So what's going on here? Why would you end up suddenly getting an awful taste in coffee if it's not the coffee beans that are at fault? You can put your hand down now, by the way. To be fair, it could be that you're just encountering a bean you don't like the taste of. If you've signed up to a discovery subscription and you get various different coffees in each delivery, it's possible you'll experience flavours you like more than others. But most of the time, it isn't this. The cause of this phenomenon is set and forget espresso machine usage. Or to put it another way, you're not dialing in. If you have what we call a bean to cup machine in the UK, usually referred to as a fully automatic machine in America, then they're made more or less for set and forget use. But I'll give you a tip for using these kinds of machines shortly. Traditional portafilter espresso machines, though, whether they have a separate grinder or integrated grinder, are made to be adjusted with each different bag of beans. They're not made for set and forget use. So if you're starting to experiment with freshly roasted coffee beans and you're using set and forget, this is usually the cause of really poor taste in espresso. By set and forget, I mean you don't tweak the settings, what we call dialing in for each new bag of beans. In fact, a lot of people very rarely change any of the settings. I'm mentioning the Barista Express because so far, most of the people I've heard from with issues that I've figured out are stemming from this are people using the Barista Express. And I think the main reason for that is a lot of people who've bought this machine are expecting it to be a fully automatic or bean to cup machine because it has a built-in grinder and because some retailers put it in that category. Some people tell me that they didn't even change the setting from factory presets and that they very rarely, if ever, change the grind size or change the shot button volumes. And most of the time when this happens, when I ask what baskets they're using, they tell me they're using the standard single wall baskets, not the dual wall pressurized baskets, because they've read that the standard baskets are the best. So this is the problem. Traditional espresso machines using traditional standard baskets need to be dialed in, meaning that you need to tweak the settings for each different bag of coffee beans. If you're wondering why some coffee tastes great with these settings, then I think I know the answer to this, although it's just my theory. If you're what I'd consider to be a normal coffee drinker, someone who can enjoy coffee in most forms, pods, cafetiere, French press, and mainly drinks mainstream big brand commodity coffee, there's a good chance you're going to be relatively happy with the result without making changes to your setting. Factory presets tend to work okay with that kind of coffee, just because it's difficult really to do anything to make a huge difference to the way it tastes. When you're using higher quality, freshly roasted coffee beans though, using the same set and forget settings you always use, the chances are it's just not gonna taste great. This kind of coffee is so much more potent in flavor. It's so much more fresh. It just has more flavor in the first place. So if your set and forget settings don't happen to work okay for that bean, it may taste like dirt. Well, it was just ground. Lol, yes, I have seen Men in Black 3. The thing is though, if you were to just try tweaking things slightly, the coffee that you first thought tasted awful could end up being the best coffee you've ever experienced. 
It's just that if you don't dial it in, because fresh beans have big flavour, if you extract it poorly it can taste bad in a big way, whereas poor extraction with mainstream coffee beans isn't going to make the same kind of difference. This doesn't mean you have to jump in with both feet into the home barista rabbit hole though if you don't want to. Just watch this video, my top 3 tips for set and forget espresso machine users and you'll see how easy it is. If you don't see anything there, it means you have to click one of these bricks, or it means your device is hiding the pop-up card thing for some reason, so have a look in the description instead. A tip though, to make things easier for you, less tweaking to do, is that if you do switch from buying your coffee with your groceries to buying higher quality, freshly roasted coffee beans, try to pick one that is described as dark roast, and just watch out for medium roasts. Generally speaking, what roasters refer to as medium is quite different from what a big commercial brand might call medium. So if you go for medium, you may end up with something quite a bit lighter roasted than you're used to. You then have a double whammy because you're dealing with beans that are fresher than you're used to and lighter roasted than you're used to, so the chances are higher in that case that your set and forget settings aren't going to produce great results. I mentioned bean to cup or super automatic machines. You can't dial in to the same degree with them, but you can still adjust things to improve the flavour. These kind of machines tend to produce a dulled down version of the espresso experience via traditional portafilter espresso machines. So for example, if someone comes to me saying they like bold chocolatey notes and they're asking which of my coffees they might want to try at seaworks.co.uk, if they're using a portafilter machine, I'll usually recommend the chocolate brownie blend, my favourite blend for traditional machines. If the customer tells me they're using a bean to cup machine though, then often the boldness won't come through for them quite in the same way, and they might find it a bit mild. So I'd recommend the chocolate fondant blend, which is a different blend of the same beans to deliver a bolder flavour. So I'd look for slightly exaggerated versions of the taste you're looking for if you're using a machine like that, as it's probably not going to be as bold as it would be with a portafilter machine. But with these kind of machines, there's still some tweaking you can do, and that would mainly be to put the grind size on a finer setting. This will usually produce better results with super automatics using freshly roasted beans, and also to experiment with ratio, which is as simple as changing the size of your espresso. But see the top three tips video in the description for more info on that. And there you go. You can blame it on the sunshine, blame it on the moonlight, blame it on the good times, blame it on the boogie if you like. I'm not bothered, just don't blame it on the coffee. Blame It on the Boogie was written by the Jacksons, but not the Jacksons you're thinking of, the Jackson Brothers from Yorkshire, and that has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click the like button if you're wondering how much they ended up making in royalties, then check the description as I've put the shocking figure in there. Thank you very much for watching, and if you love coffee and enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how-tos on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.